my friends and welcome to episode 13 of our Football Manager 2020 Let's Play with Queen's Park where we are going pro. Of course now we are pro and we have broke our transfer record since the last episode. Now you can see all the transfers on the screen just now. I'm going to go through them. On the outs we've got Mark Finlayson going out. He went to Annan for about a thousand pounds. It's not too bad a deal with that and then everything else is really just young kids on loan. The highlight really of those loans is Gareth York who's a solid defender, hopefully can become a fairly decent thing. Um, you know, I think potential-wise, it's not really highlighting anything here. I think it's just uh, could improve a lot in the future. Doesn't actually tell us what division, but hopefully he can become a decent player. On the ends, we're going to start with Mark Lamont now. I wasn't really looking for a midfielder at this point, and we've bought two, so that kind of becomes rather interesting but Mark Lamont came up and it came up through the social feed that Ross County had made a bid for him of £4,000 so I just clicked on him and I thought actually he looks pretty good so I put him in a bed expecting to have no chance of competing with Ross County who we played today by the way in the Challenge Cup it's a slightly different scheduled one um, but he was at Clyde if I remember correctly who are also our rivals so I put him in a bid they didn't ask for any more money 4.1k got him and he is regarded as pretty good he's 22 Still got room to improve, and he's already regarded as a leading player for this division, and could improve to a leading player for the division above, uh, according to Willie Donahue, who is one of my staff members, who I need to cover because I've changed a lot of staff uh, in the sort of window. But he's got good work rate; he's fairly decent, and he will become a starting midfielder for us. Because as much as I like Campbell Notley and uh, Dean McCall McMaster, they're not there yet. You know, Campbell Notley two star which I think is still decent for League One, yeah, League One level, and uh, where is Dean McMaster? We're all the way up here, and again, he is League, uh, League One. I'm pretty sure he will have put, uh, Premiership potential, Campbell Notley, I'm not sure. But again, I just felt it wasn't quite, you know, when you look at stats, I don't think he's quite there yet and not quite ready. So hopefully he's a player for the future, where there's Mark Lamont being a player for the now. We then spent a huge chunk of our money, 22,000, rising up to 26,000. No add-ons though, to bring in Nick McAllister. He is a right-footed uh, defender, can pass to an extent, but he's got good position, good head and decent pace. It was just an upgrade, in all honesty, and I felt this was a big upgrade, you know. It doesn't actually show much in the star rating. Currently operating at League One level. Now, they do say he can only become a championship defender, which means I've probably overspent but he's fairly good. We brought in Liam Gibson on loan from Newcastle. He is a left back, finally got a button. And he has a big upgrade. He's on 800 pound a week, so you know that I've, you know, taken a risk here, but you see straight away a star better in that, right? Good player for most championship sides and potential to be a premiership player in the future. He's a big upgrade on certainly Rico and um, a decent upgrade on McCourt as well. So that's pretty good. We've got uh, him on loan. We've got Sean Ardarka on loan from West Ham. He's on £500 a week. And again, it's just another step up in terms of ability currently operating at championship level. Unfortunately, he's not hit the ground running, as you'll see from history. Three games and a fairly poor performance, in fact. On that basis, I don't think he's ready. And, you know, I'm a bit curious. And then we've got deadline day signing. Andy Murdoch comes in. Now, again, this was just one of those where I was looking at players and he came up on the transfer list and I thought, you know what, let's gamble on him. He's a fairly solid player all round. Again, I'm pretty sure championship level yet. Uh, no good player for League One sides, unfortunately. But he's fairly solid again. He can play all our sort of roles and he can go back into there as well. Uh, so he covers just about everything that we need and he will be a sort of rotation option. But again, that's issues with the wage budget. We'll have a look at schedule uh, before we do that. So since the last game where we played and lost to Dunfermline with quite a frustrating goal to concede, we beat Airdrie 3-0, Brad Lyons and Callum Gallagher with a brace before we played Kilmarnock Reserves where Callum Gallagher scored again. Russ McIver played and he scored. Dylan Easton played and scored. He actually got man in the match. He was absolutely outstanding. And Dean McMaster also scoring. Uh, Kyle McConnell scored for them. But then lost 3-2 to Dumbarton. And that's quite a frustrating game. I actually thought we were not great, but we weren't bad. I felt we were good for a win. They got a player sent off very early on. But Nick McAllister and Jack Perdue getting the goals for us. 
before we played East Fife. And actually, I should have my custom view on so you can guys can see the attendance and see where we're at. Um, where we won 2 0. Yannick Leboa and Callum Gallagher on the score sheet there. Before we played Morton, Craig Conway got himself a brace, Brad Lyons and Daryl McGat also on the score sheet. Today is a step up in opposition into the recently relegated Ross County in the third round of the Tunnock's Caramel Wafer Cup. That's going to be interesting. And I think this game was just the right decision. So if we have a look at the league, we're in fourth, but we're only a point off top after a rocky start. Edinburgh City again doing business unbeaten so far. They obviously doing a strong link. Callum Gallagher second top goal scorer. Billy Henderson once again top goal scorer. Ryan Mullen has the most clean sheets in the league. While Brad Lyons has the most assists. So showing that that gamble bringing him in from Blackburn was worth it. Hopefully whilst we get this squad settled. Because as you can see from the dynamics it's not ideal. So we need to... <coughs> Excuse me. We need to get that sort of going. And I'm working on that in training, trying to get things up in that with certainly the team cohesion. Um, because, you know, there has been a lot of players coming in. But, that's fine. If we can get that up a bit, we'll get some benefit. Uh, in terms of wage budget, we're spending £11,939 a week, which is almost triple what we were spending last year. So it's a big, big increase. We need to make sure that we're not going too crazy on that. Um, and as you'll see, uh, I think that does mean that we're now the most expensive team in the league in terms of wages. Uh, indeed, we are 2,000 above Morton uh, for salary per annum. And, you know, a decent bit above Dunfermline, so we could knock that off. Dunfermline did have a lot of bids for uh, Kevin Nesbitt, so I'm kind of hoping he's, gone, he's not. Still wanted. In fact, it's Leeds that want him now. I've got him on my, uh, my short list in case it does become available. His contract's up at the end of the season. And, you know, grabbing a leading championship uh, striker really wouldn't be a bad option. But as you see, granted, it's not updated since we've brought uh, the lad in from West Ham. But that's a big, big upgrade in terms of ability. Doesn't necessarily fit our advanced forward role. But, you know, we could always change the poacher, and he's not that bad in the air either, is he? So I'm keeping an eye on him and monitoring that situation as much as I can. I couldn't afford to buy him outright. That's, well, I could, but I'm not going to. Uh, so we're going to get into today's match. I already think I've selected the team, and I'm fairly content with it. Aidan Wilson's in, Nick McAllister in for his first YouTube game. Craig Conway and Jack Perdue's uh, fitness does worry me a little bit. I might change the bench a little bit to account for that and bring Dylan Easton onto the bench for McMaster. Uh, Regan Thompson can actually come back in for Murdoch. I want to get him as much game time as we can. And then it's debate whether Murdoch or Lamont. And for this game, I think I'm going to go with Andy Murdoch. does drop his star rating, but actually, stat-wise, I think they're fairly similar. If we have a look, um, comparison with Mark Lamont, please. Yeah, so Murdoch definitely better at defending. In fact, attributes. Technically similar, Murdoch definitely better at defending the passing, the mark and stuff like that. I think that's going to be important in this game. Uh, similar again, definitely with Lamont better going forward though. Uh, but I'm going to play with the DM formation once we get into the game, so I think it makes sense to bring Murdoch in for this game. Um, whether it's Mark Lamont won't be able to fit in there anywhere near as well as Andy Murdoch's role, so it kind of works out for us here, so they've got any players I reckon, Craig, Craig Sibold obviously, Kerr John, no that's Jack Ruddy in it, yeah uh, Kelly, Sean Kelly I don't recognise a lot of these players which is actually quite frustrating because a lot of them probably started there um, Draper on the bench you know, decent team hopefully we can get a result but you know uh, they've lost all their last five games wow that's a poor run of form from them uh, pressure's off though and then tactics usual tactics bring you back you're gonna get used to it now aren't you and you can play as a in fact I've never used a Sigurando Volante 
best suited when paired with an anchor man though. But you know, we'll try it. I've never used one, so why not? Uh, plate for set pieces. Um, Wilson and McAllister. Who's best at Morgan? I think it might be McAllister. Fifteen. It's going to be hard to beat. Eleven. Yeah. What formation to play in actually? Opposition. Uh, two strikers. So we'll get both of them Morgan anyway. Actually. Uh, Mark. Tightly Mark. You do him. And you do him. That works out for me. Kick off. Good luck, boys. Come on. Another big win for the Queen's Park in a cup would be absolutely amazing. We've started well with a shot early on. Farrell in because Heger is injured. Uh, so, you know, giving Farrell the cup games instead. And just gives Matt Mullen a bit of a rest. Sebald. Butcher. Played out to Sean Kelly. It's a good ball in. Away by Aidan Wilson. Butcher. Back to Sean Kelly. That's another teasing ball in for Craig Sebald. And Austin. It's just got in front of me. Uh, I think Aidan Wilson has to do better there. And actually had a decent start as well before that. I think it's Aidan Wilson. Yeah, he just loses him briefly and then doesn't attack this anywhere near as much as he should. Aidan Wilson, I'm having mixed feelings about him. I want him to be so good for us. And stat-wise, he is a perfect ball-playing defender, but I'm not convinced that it's going to work out again. He's lost his man there. Why are we so far off him? Tight marking, please. Hard. And shown his right foot. Confirm changes. I don't know why we're giving him so much space. Gibson. Regan Thompson. Launches forward looking for Callum Gallagher. We're not in this game at all right now. In fact, this is actually really poor showing. This is the worst performance I've seen from us in a cup so far. And we started bright with the early shot. And then we're 2-0 down after seven minutes. And both times it's been Aidan Wilson that's lost his man. Yeah, Nick McAllister's the one that's getting the 6.3. Unbeknown to me why that's the case. Rad lines, heads in, can't find anyone. Cleared away. Gibson. Regan Thompson in space. Forward for Jack Purdue. Andy Murdoch. Neko Williams, the man on loan from Liverpool. Can he find a God, oh, just tuck it across the box, man. We had three players, excuse me, three players lined up there to take a tap in there. And he goes for the shot. Purdue to Conway. Not the quickest Craig Conway, which is a bit of an issue, but that's a great ball into Callum Gallagher, who is on scoring form just now, which is why he's playing. That's his sixth of the season. And I cannot put him out of the team just now because he is on an absolutely unbelievable run. I've always said that I want to have clinical strikers and football manager. You know, if you look back, we've had guys in the past like Z Gomez, who's unbelievable at hearts. Before that, we had Jordan Kreitzley at 4 for in that save. That was FM18. Uh, FM17, we had Zach Rudden. All these guys who maybe weren't the best players, but they were absolutely prolific. And I think FM19 and this year, I've struggled to find that really, um, have that prolific striker. So if Callum Gallagher is that prolific striker at this level, that makes things a lot easier for me. And, you know, I don't think I can cancel the West Ham lads' loan. That's a good save from Farrell. Um, but it might not be relevant, and hopefully it isn't. Jones with another kick in here for the corner. How's that gone in the back of the net? How has that gone in? It's headed here. The keeper's made a good save. Gibson, what are you doing? He literally heads it in. Wow. He literally headed that in. Nick McAllister, that's us back with him one. Another good header there from Nick McAllister. His second of the season, he is good in the air. It's one of the reasons that attracted me to him, but he's so good in the tackle. Um, really good header there from Nick McAllister from an angle that you really shouldn't score from. The goalkeeper's kind of got himself caught in no man's land. Another free kick, Conway whips it in. Aidan Wilson loses out. His first is a spondo. 
gets it back to Gibson, who's absolutely shocking on goal, has left us behind here. Farrell launches it forward. Can't find Callum Gallagher. Need a bit more here, guys. Come on. Andy Murdoch actually doing a decent job there and does get the ball. Brad Lyons back to Andy Murdoch. Launch forward. Not going to find a red jersey there, though. Butcher, Fraser, Sebald. Just passes it straight to Purdue. That works for me. Neko Williams, it's over the top. Callum Gallagher's in. Can he continue his goal-scoring form? No, he cannot. It's wide of the mark. Farrell plays it out to Nick McAllister. Launches it forward on his weak foot. Purdue wins a good header there. Gets it into Conway, who gives it straight back to Purdue in a better position. Doesn't do anything with it, though. Poor Wilson heads away. Regan Thompson comes and helps him out. Gets it to Purdue. Can he do something with it this time? He can. He can find Callum Gallagher. Oh, that's a great block from Kerr. The goalkeeper was getting nowhere near that one as well. It was a really good effort. Conway with the corner, back post. Cleared away. Andy Murdoch needs to win this one. He does. Oh, it's a poor pass though, but it's cleared away. And thankfully, Neko Williams, the only man who's ever going to get to that one. And we get into the half time. We're 3 2 down. But, you know, it's been a horrific own goal. How he got a 6.8 with that own goal, by the way. It's absolutely shocking. He could head it in any direction apart from the one that he did. Uh, I don't think I'm going to change anything too much here. Maybe bring Purdue off for Easton, actually. He's not having a great game, Purdue. He's quite tired. Say, say that, he's got 6.9, which isn't horrific. But Dylan Easton making his YouTube return since the time that he played for us with Forfar back in the day. That was a while ago, wasn't it? Uh, two years ago, it would have been. But it was absolutely outstanding for us then. Can we be outstanding for us again now? Let's give a get creative. I was going to say we've got a free kick here, but it's actually them that's got the free kick. Looks like a foul from Andy Murdoch. As Austin lines up, this is a dangerous area. It's off the post. Don't think Farrell had that uncovered, you know. We're going to make our next sub. We're going to bring on Leboa for Conway. And give him some game time. And Gibson's taking a knock here, so we'll just bring on Jack McCourt. And give it another 10, 15 minutes. And then we go for it. With about, what, 8, 8, 85 on the clock, I think we go. Draper, Kerr, whips it in. Farrell always getting to that one first. Rolls it out to Andy Murdoch. And Aidan Wilson launches forward. Kerr, back. Duncan, down to Draper. And then for Austin, the man who scored a brace for them, it's off the post and bounces back off Farrell. That could have gone anywhere. That was dangerous. Thankfully for us, it's gone out for a corner. Hopefully we can now defend it well. Cleared away only as far as Butcher actually. Brad Lyons has done a decent job there to flick it on again. Nobody there for us though, but, you know, decent. Just keeping it away. Let us reset. That's decent ball in. Poor from Wilson again, just letting his man go. Farrell, Wilson. Right, let's go for it. Very attacking. I'm going to up the tempo slightly. And... No. Just go with that. That's fine. Got no more subs, of course. As they whip in this corner. Wide of the mark from Marcus Fraser. <sighs> Going to give a push forward as well. Fired up by the attacking players, that's good. Not really anything happening, no, the typical very attacking or overload. No highlights. In fact, I've even had a shot. Oh well, we're out. Lewis Gibson's horrific own goal coming to haunt us. Which is frustrating. But so somehow gets a 6.9. 6.7 rather. But it's an absolutely shocking on goal to concede. So we're out of the cup. Well, the Caramel Wafer Cup. But I think we've achieved what we were needed to do there. That was a bad draw as well. So, Betfair Cup, please reach third round minimum. So that's fine. So, just got to get to the fourth round of the Scottish Cup now. 
and the playoffs in the league, and that's us on course. Work within the wage budget. It, we really could not work within the wage budget, in fact. That's really not changing much, is it? Um, cancel that. Um, don't sign players over 30, we're fine with that. We've signed a couple, make most of the set of pieces. They're very pleased with that. And develop the Cubs, club's youth system. Oh, again, we're working on that. And then we're just to challenge for a playoff place for every year after this, should we not get promoted. Rumoured a... Oh, didn't know anything about that. Um... So, when will we be back for the next episode? I'm think, kind of thinking. We go all the way to the end of October now, so... Yeah, I like that idea. We come back for... In fact, Clyde. Clyde's a derby, I'm sure. Club info. General. Right, fierce rivals, Clyde. Yep, so that steals that. Come back for Clyde. The second game against Clyde, the one at home at Lesser Hamden. We'll come back then for that game. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit like, hit subscribe. Let me know what you think of the team and I'll hopefully catch you all next time.